I know it happened with you guys where your channels got taken down. I heard that you guys are looking to implement ThreadLocker. A lot of it's coming down to like, how do we implement it within our organization without just dropping a nuke on our productivity, um, which is something they've talked about. So like this is, they're clearly aware of this potential problem, but I think as well, our organization is like, pretty non-standard yeah and it's like a lot of people know the old like just drop flash drives around yep. and hope people plug them in meme but most people don't know about the cables so I, I think in regards to it threats i think omg cable is a much scarier thing right now than than random discarded flash drives everyone david bumble coming to you from ztw25 with a very special guest luke great to meet you in person thanks for having me yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. seeing what you look like on the screen yeah. <laughs> you look better in, in in person i think i i, I appreciate that you as well you as well i thank um, you I usually, people are usually surprised. They think I'm taller than I am because I'm Linus is so tall. short. Yep. Yeah. So they're like, oh, we thought you're going to be like enormous. And it's like, no, he's actually just kind of small. Yeah. So you've been at the conference. Yeah. I believe you've done some stuff with rubber duckies and other yes. things. Yeah. What have you really enjoyed at the conference? Uh, that was my first time actually playing around with a rubber ducky in person. Obviously, I was aware of them, but I hadn't actually done hands-on work with them before. So AJ and I had a, he's off camera, but we had a fun little project where, on a Channel Super Fun video years ago, I showed this uh, project that I worked on in high school. Yep. It was where I found someone's code online and then adapted it for myself at Napalm, if anyone knows, uh, to make what's called a screen melter. Um, and we just made it so that we could rubber ducky somebody with the screen melter. So we, we loaded that program onto uh, the ducky itself had it target itself and run it when you plugged it in. Um, so that was that was fun. That was cool. I always like adapting that into other various fun ways of deploying it, whether it be like network-based or manually running on the computer or timer-based or whatever else. So this was a, a cool new way to deploy it that I haven't messed with in the past. Is this something you're going to use against Linus at some point? I've actually genuinely been thinking about like, do I have some form of follow-up to the old Screen Melter video where we like, I don't know. Maybe maybe we get Linus with it with a with an actual ducky, or maybe we just like network deploy it for the whole company, um, which I don't know could be fun. Did it show you practically how easy it is to launch these kind of attacks? I mean, I did already know, um, but it's it it is surprisingly simple to uh, like. I was aware of you didn't have duckies. to know like kind of scripting language or anything. It's very easy, right? Yeah, I mean, you can also know that if you want to make it more advanced there is there is ducky script and there's some cool things that you can do with it but it's very script kitty friendly i would say yeah yeah I think especially it, with chat gpt because chat gpt yeah. it can look stuff up so it knows ducky script so you can just ask it to make something for you and yeah exactly have you have you tried the omg cables uh that's another one actually no we have those around the office omg cables are pretty wild there yeah I, I haven't actually used one myself but i again i'm aware of them I mean, what I really like about them is if you plug them into a phone, like I mean, with the USB these days, people think their phones, iPhones or whatever are secure devices, but little do they know. Yeah, and it's like a lot of people know the old, like just drop flash drives around yep. and hope people plug them in meme, but most people don't know about the cables. So I, I think in regards to IT threats, I think OMG cable is a much scarier thing right now than than random discarded flash drives. So we at ThreadLocker, I know it happened with you guys where your channels got taken down. Yeah. It, uh, Linus did a video about it. I mean, it's well known. I heard that you guys are looking to implement ThreadLocker as perhaps a solution to that. What, what, you know, what are your thoughts about ThreadLocker and what are you guys thinking of doing? Yeah, th that particular incident could have been stopped by the setup that we currently have as well because we're currently running Sentinel-1. Um, it was running in a very passive mode because at that time we had effectively no IT within the company. It was just Jake Tyvee in his spare time doing what he could. And he for, for what he could, he did great. Uh, but now we have like an actual IT team since then. Um, and now uh, a, a more managed, more or more highly set Sentinel-1 would have caught that particular incident. And it actually did. Um, it's just the user dismissed the warning. Um, and it, at its current setting that we have it on now, it just wouldn't have let them do anything with it anyways. At that time, they just dismissed the warning and they did it regardless, which was a, a bit of a mistake, obviously. But it's, it's humans, right? And the, yeah. hum, humans are humans. Yeah, humans, social engineering, all that kind of stuff is really the biggest threat. I think our interest in threat logger is more like layered security. Yeah. So now we'll have both. There's, you know, the default deny, zero trust type of solution. And then you have the active scanning um, below that as well. So it's, it's more the combined approach that we're looking for layers onions all that kind of fun stuff layers onions have layers you're busy implementing at the moment right yeah yeah we started implementing probably a couple weeks ago 
around there. And what do you think? What do you think about the learning mode? I'm assuming it's still in learning mode. Yep, still in learning mode. Uh, it seems seems pretty good to us. It's a little early on to to truly say, uh, but it seems seems cool so far. We're the one thing that we're kind of interested in is like it's pretty hardcore for some of the users that we have in the office. Like yeah. if, you, if you think about the writing team that we have, yep. right? They're messing around and playing with weird stuff exactly all the time. Right. So having a default deny for that team might actually be really dramatically negative towards their productivity. So setting up the individual user bases within the company, um, or I think the way it's set up in Threat Locker is orgs, setting up these orgs, even if they're not real orgs, is going to be some of the work that needs to be done because like, we need to allow the writers a little bit more flexibility with things. We need to allow uh, potentially the lab some more flexibility with things. But then like the business groups, the the marketing groups, the accounting groups, stuff like that, you can have more on uh, more hardcore settings. A lot of it's coming down to like, how do we implement it within our organization without just dropping a nuke on our productivity, um, which is something they've talked about. So like this is, they're clearly aware of this potential problem, but I think as well, our organization is like pretty non-standard. Um, so yeah, we're adapting. Yeah, I mean, the that. risk is all these emails coming in, right? And people opening up attachments. Yeah. But I mean, the people that are doing that don't need to, to like, I don't know, do they need to test a whole bunch of weird software for videos or is it like a separate group? It's it's honestly, the writers are pretty mixed because the writers are dealing with correspondents that are, you know, some some random person emailing us, letting us know that they have some cool piece of tech or whatever. We, we don't want to lose those leads. So they're opening random emails with random attachments. Uh, but again, I think it comes down to user grouping to a certain degree. Yeah, like the, the accountants, for instance, um, they're going to be doing much more methodical, much more standard things every day. Um, so we can we can have theirs a little bit more strict and the level of potential impact is really high there yeah. compared to a writer where like if their if their system gets compromised, obviously there's ability there's there's the potentiality of like, oh, if their email gets taken over, you can use that as a confidence attack against other people within the company, all that jazz. But realistically the level of impact is is going to be lower for them than some other parties within the company depending on which writer it is if it's linus you know um <laughs> yeah but it is what it is i mean you guys have been on this journey right in the like you're saying the infrastructure or the id was kind of like a side job if you like and you know take us on the journey you've, you've kind of been forced because the company's quite big now right yeah you've been forced to like become more like an enterprise in some ways yeah oh definitely there's uh there's a phrase internally that we're becoming a real company um but you which, guys have been saying that for a while yeah it's a it's a slow and constant progress there's um it, it's interesting we we still on the it side of things have are, are lacking things that people would probably expect us to have but um the it team has been in somewhat of a kind of like triage mode since we've joined because we we basically went from no IT team or or uh, you know like twenty percent of one person's time as an IT team for a hundred person three location company which is clearly insufficient to now having an actual IT team so we've been trying to kind of play catch up so a lot of it was like okay literally nothing is documented whatsoever so for the first while when we join it's it's build documentation then it's like okay what are the most important things that we need to get in place to just be able to keep moving um and we've been stacking those over time um like if i told you this might be surprising we don't have any ad set up what yeah what so we're, we're getting there it's yeah. gonna happen but i mean <laughs> like your fight your main function is to produce cool and interesting videos right yeah and you so, know what stuff's stopping you doing that yeah so we we've been we've been keeping that moving forward and doing everything that we need to do to keep that moving forward. We had the um, Linus got fished a little while ago. I don't know yeah, if you I saw that the, on X. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, we were already working on this setup. It wasn't implemented implemented yet, but so we're take now his working. Away. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have actually tried to limit his access to certain things, not because of you know it, he should be able to access it or not, but it's it's this whole concept of it. It's not really trust it's what if you get compromised what is the threat level of that um so the threat level of like a company owner getting compromised is clearly very high uh but then he finds his way to work around whatever we we implement so it is what it is he's uh, like your most difficult user which is normal I oh, think, yeah. for the owners yeah uh but he's so chaotic like he'll he'll just log into his email on random laptops around the office and just leave it there logged in and it's like oh my goodness so yeah, the IT team's been kind of chasing him around for a while, but uh, we we now have email security in place and email security training. We, we found that 
and I, I suspect this is pretty average, but the the younger people at the office didn't grow up with email being a primary communication method. A lot of them grew up with instant messaging being a primary communication method. So they're not used to things like phishing attacks. So they are very likely to fall for it. Um, and we found a, a very high percentage of people in the office did fall for like a simulated phishing attack. So we're doing like education and training around that right now. Um, and just, again, slowly moving things forward and eventually we'll, we'll be in a good spot. I think the advantage of this solution, right, is you're not relying on your users not to click on the link. Yeah, the the whole the whole not trusting things, default deny, layer before, all that kind of stuff. I really like that concept. Before I was even aware of of ThreatLocker as a company, I appreciated and respected the the zero trust concept. Yeah. Um so it, this feels like a fairly natural continuation of IT security in my opinion. Great to meet you. Nice we to meet appreciate you as well. it, man. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate it.